God's word. Acts chapter 3, we begin reading at verse 1. Begin reading at verse 1. Acts chapter 3, verse 1. We there? We ready? Now Peter and John went up together to the temple with the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask for alms from those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, into the temple asked for alms, and fixing his eyes on him, with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave so he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Let us pray, Father. We have sung about that name. We have worshipped that name. Now, God, give us a deeper understanding about that name, God, that we can apply it, that name in our lives and apply that name in the lives of others. God, give us your spirit. Incline your ear to our prayers this evening, this morning. God, in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Before I get into my text this morning, I think the last time I gave a joke, it, it was a flop, so I'm going to try it again. <laughs> so y'all be, y'all be easy with me now. I think, uh, I think if Erica Badu on her older song says, I'm an artist, so y'all be easy on me. It was Erica Badu, whatever was the name. Y'all go easy on me. A preacher visits an elderly woman from his congregation. And as he sits on the couch, he notices a large bowl of peanuts on the coffee table. Mind if I have a few, he said. No, not at all, the woman replied. They chat for an hour, and as the preacher stands to leave, he realizes that instead of eating just a few peanuts, he emptied most of the bowl. I'm terribly sorry for for eating all your peanuts. I really just meant to eat a few. Oh, that's all right, the woman says. Ever since I lost my teeth, all I can do is suck the chocolate off them. <laughs> all right, one, one more. I think this is like 12.45 at night. Hey, this was, that was not a bad one. Hold on, one more, one more, one more. That was not bad. I mean, I'm, I'm sensitive. I'm sensitive. Now, after I say this joke, then don't y'all be coming to me after service doing what this guy here is doing. The new minister stood at the church door greeting the members as they left the Sunday morning service. Most of the people were very generous telling the new minister how much they liked his message, except for one man who said, that was a very dull and boring sermon, Pastor. A few minutes later, the same man again appeared in line and said, I don't think you did much preparation for your message. Once again, the man appeared, this time muttering, you really blew it. You didn't have a thing to say, Pastor. I don't think I'm a minister today. (laughs) How did you get this feeling last night when I was reading this? He said, finally, 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 the minister couldn't stand it no longer. He went to one of the deacons and inquired about the man. Oh, don't let that guy bother you, said the deacon. He's a little slow. All he does is go around repeating whatever he hears other people saying. All right, now, don't be saying path. You didn't prepare that. <laughs> All right, look like I'm making my way back up in the, in the, in the, the joke telling thing a little bit. Anyways, listen, we're going to get into our, our text this morning. And my, my focus, family, is to, or my objective for today is to um, get our focus off of ourselves. Get it on Jesus. Right. You know, I try to, as a minister, I try to find a balance 
ministering to of the needs of the people, but also ministering Christ. And I asked God this week here as I was going, preparing, going back and forth, what should I minister on, this, that, and the other, I kept on hearing in my spirit, I kept saying to myself, God, I want to minister something about your son, Jesus. I want to, I want to bring Christ's name and just make it the center, get our focus off ourselves. Not that the last two, two uh, Sundays about worry was not needed and hopefully helpful to everyone, including I know it helped me um, as, we, as I carry on throughout the week and when I constantly remind myself, do not worry, don't worry about it. God got it taken care of. And hopefully, Veronica, you were able to, um, that was able to encourage you and help you through this, this weekend here. But I said, God, I want to bring Jesus back to the center of our thoughts and center of our focus here. And sometimes, at least I get this feeling, sometimes that when I minister from um, abstract things, if you will, that sometimes it's hard for people to really pick up on it and apply it in their lives. So I have asked God that, you know, say, God, let this minister to your people. Let it do something for them that will change their understanding about your son, that will grow them deeper into who Jesus is and what it is about that name. So just listen attentively as you can. Listen by your spirits. This is not about what you're dealing with. This is not about your problems. This is about the name of Jesus. And when we can focus on the name of Jesus, don't you know that all of our problems begin to disappear? All those things that we used to worry about, right? We used to worry about. They begin to go away because now we're focusing on that name. And scripture tells us, and we sung about earlier today, that that, at that name, every situation, my paraphrase, every knee, you know, every knee must bow, every tongue shall confess. So as I go through this for these next few moments, your spirit is required, not your intellect. Your spirit is required and not your situation. If God ministers to your situation or to your circumstances, that's a byproduct and that's a, a bonus for you. But allow your spirit to hear what thus says the Lord. Allow your spirit to get this, this, uh, this name, Jesus. You know, we, we look through scripture and we see, at least in the New Testament, most of the obviously in the New Testament, we see that that name of Jesus carries a lot of weight. We read in Acts chapter 3 when John and Peter was going into the temple and there was a man laying uh, by, the, uh, by the entrance of the temple begging for alms and Peter did not have any money to give him. So he said, what I can give to you, I give you, he says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise, rise up and walk. And as I began to look at that text, I said, what is it about that name that would cause a lame man to get up and walk. What is it about that name that kingdoms will eventually bow down to? What is it about that name that when there are two or more together in that name, the presence of God comes in? What is it about that name that if we ask anything in that name that it shall be done? God, I said, I want to know what is it about that name that wrought so many miracles that we read in Scripture. God, what is it about that name that J or Peter could just say, in the name of Jesus Christ, and have to rise up and walk. What is it about that name? So not only, family, does, does that name bring miracles, not only does that name offers uh, uh, at some day and even now the kingdoms will bow down, but also that name, many have suffered for it. In this same story here in, chapter, in uh, Acts 3 and Acts 4, we see that uh, Peter and John was put in prison or was arrested. Why? Because they were preaching that name. It wasn't that they were healing folks. It wasn't that they, they the lame man walked, he said, is that name, he told them in Acts chapter 4, we will let you go, but stop preaching that name. 
So that name not only brings about miracles and blessings of God, that name also brings about suffering. You look at Stephen, the first martyr we read in the book of Acts. It was because of that name that he was stoned. It was because of that name that Saul of Tarsus was converted into Paul, who we now uh, minister from and read from in our Bible. So I begin to ask God, I say, God, what is it about that name? I want to know. I want power in my life that when I pray for someone, that that name will heal that sickness. All right, all right. Yes. What is it about that name? You see, the problem is, family, is that we, in our modern day, we don't have a correct understanding of the meaning of a name. All right. You know, in biblical times, names had very important meaning and significance. Right. Yeah. If someone was named something, it, it could have been related to how they were born. Look at Moses, for he was drawn out to draw out. You look at um, uh, Abraham, or Abraham, his name was changed. The, in, in Bible days, we see names being given based on how they were born, based on how a, a parent would have reacted to that birth, Sarah named her uh, child Isaac would mean laughter. God, remember, God said, Sarah, in your old age, you will conceive a son. And she started to laugh. So names had some significant meaning in biblical times. Also name family, more importantly, the names given in Bible times had a direct uh, uh, relation to the person's identity, destiny, function, and purpose. But today when we name folks, we name them because it sounds cool. I'll, I'll, I'll be, look, when we name Kai, Kai Anthony Simon, that just roll off the tongue. And I'm just, I'm just imagining him in this, you know, his shirt playing football, Kai Anthony running down there, Kai, and now my wife won't let him play football, but y'all pray for her. <laughs> Tell her it's all right. It's all right. All right. Anyways. Anyways, so, so, so we, we come up with names for our children in this modern day because sometimes it sounds good. Because it's, in, in our modern time, names is seen more as a, a, an identification or a badge, a label. We're calling him John, John Smith. What does John Smith mean? Well, because his father was John Smith. Okay, but what does John Smith mean? So we also, in our modern day, give names because of it. It commemorates someone special, a loved one. A father may he who has died, a grandfather who had an impact on our life. You know, we also name, uh, you know, we name our children because we like a certain thing, like a Porsche. <laughs> so we name our children Porsche. You know, uh, you know or Mercedes. You know, I never heard one called Corvette, but definitely Porsche and Mercedes, they out there. <laughs> now, if you have one of those names, I'm not talking about your name. I'm trying to make a point here. That a name in the biblical time had significance, it had meaning, it has importance. So when we say the name of Jesus, we have to understand what Jesus meant and what was the purpose of him being named Jesus. Look at the, turn with me please to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. Remember this, keep this in mind as I go through this here. In biblical context, in most cases, or in in some cases, definitely in Jesus, a name is given to uh, is given to, to to have the purpose or the intended purpose and destiny of that individual, that function, or that specific nature. If you look at Matthew chapter one, we'll see what was Jesus, or why was he named Jesus. Bear with me. Bear with me. Let's start at verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you marry your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. 
Look at verse 21, key verse. And she will bring forth a son, and she shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. See, when we say the name of Jesus, or when Peter and, and John said in the name of Christ, Jesus Christ of Nazareth walk, they understood the purpose of that name. They understood it wasn't just the person they were thinking of. They were thinking of the, 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 the purpose and the, uh, the destiny of the name Jesus. So now as we consider this, as we consider that name Jesus and we look at what it means, it means to save, salvation, Savior. There's a few things that must come along with that name. There's a few characteristics or attributes that must come along with a name like Jesus if you're really going to be a savior and one who is saving someone from their sin. The first characteristic family of that name, Jesus, it must have compassion. If you're, if you're not going to save someone if you're not first compassionate about the individual. So the name Jesus carried with it Compassion, we read in Matthew 9, 35 through 38, that when Jesus saw the multitude, how they were weary and scattered, let's say that he was moved with compassion. When he was feeding the, the 5,000 in Matthew 14, 14 uh, he, he, he was moved with compassion and he began to heal their sick. In Matthew 20, 29 through 34, two blind men received their sight. It says that Jesus was filled with compassion. In order for the name Jesus to have the meaning and to accomplish its intended purpose, uh, a function, it had to have with it compassion. So when we think of that name Jesus, we must think of compassion. When we speak the name of Jesus over someone's life and we pray in the name of Jesus, we must be praying with compassion for whatever the situation may be. The second characteristic of the name of Jesus family that it must have power in order for the name Jesus or that name Jesus to accomplish its intended purpose its task its destiny its function it must have power when you say to someone I pray in the name of Jesus that you be healed that name must come with some power or with power. Jesus says like this in Matthew 28, 18, all power has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So we see in scripture several places in the gospel where Jesus says he has power or he has authority. In order for his name to be effective, in order for his name to be, to, to wrought a miracle and to change a life, to change a soul, it must have power so it must have compassion it must have power but not only that family in order for that name to be able to uh, uh to be able to heal and have so much power it must be the name that's highest above any other name you see if jesus name is not the highest above every other name then some other name can come behind jesus and undo or overwrite what he did but because jesus name is the highest name look at philippians turn your word please to Philippians 2. Look at Philippians 2. That name, Jesus. Look at verse 9. So his name must be the highest. It must be above every other name. Verse 9 says, Therefore God has highly exalted him, and given him the name which is above every name. We cannot speak the name of Jesus and believe the promises in Scripture if his name was not above every other name. There can be no higher power or no higher name than the name of Jesus. When you speak the name of Jesus, understand that you're speaking the highest name that has ever been given or will ever be given. That when you speak the name of Jesus, you're speaking a name that has power. 
that when you speak the name of Jesus, you're speaking a name that has come passion. Not only that, family, but that name Jesus must also be an everlasting name, which means that there could be no other name that can come after the name of Jesus. In Revelation 22, 13, we read that he is, or I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. For that name to remain powerful for your generation, the next generation, it must be a name that is, will always be around. It must be a name that cannot be usurped, that cannot be, uh, uh, another name cannot come around because it has to be a name that is everlasting, a name that is full of power, a name that is filled with compassion, and a name that is above every other name. So when John and Peter tells the lame man at the temple, says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, what they are saying in the name that has all power, in the name that, is, that it has compassion beyond what you and I can understand, in the name that is above every other name, in the name that is everlasting, that, will, that, was, that was in the beginning and will be at the end. According to that name, we can say lame man, or they said lame man, rise and I'm going out music, Brandon, please. So what does that mean for us? If, if we as believers have the authority and the power to exercise that name, what does that mean for us? What are some of the conditions, if you will, that we can exercise that name? First, understand this family. In order to exercise that name, you must be doing it in the will of God. When he says, ask whatever you will in my name, it's not ask whatever you will. There is some conditions wrapped around that, that you are asking God in his will. You can't go down to the uh, nearest car lot and ask God to give you this, and it's not in his will to get you. You cannot do that. But because... And, and, but, but when we ask according to his name in his will, we have the promise of God to know that it will be done for us. So as believers, family, in this modern day generation, when we speak the name of Jesus, when we pray in the name of Jesus, when we bind and loose in the name of Jesus, we must be doing it in the will of God. And secondly, we must know that we have the power to do so. Softly, Brandon, please. That we have the power. We can be just like Peter and John. We can walk by a friend, our neighbor, our coworker, our cousin, or whoever it might be, and say, in the name of Jesus, be healed. But first, we must understand that we must be in God's will. We must be asking in God's will. It might not be in God's will that that person be healed in this arena. That doesn't mean that we can't ask for that. But we must understand that when certain things don't happen, that doesn't mean that our prayers were ineffective. That means God had an ultimate plan and will. It was not his will. We must also believe that we have the power. Do you believe that you can you walk up to someone tomorrow and say, in the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, your mind is free. Do you have that in your spirit that you have that power that you can do that? Do you believe this is not something that was for the disciples, those who maybe walk closer to Jesus. This is for every believer. He said, I've given you power to tread upon serpents. I've given you power to loose on earth, and they will be loosed in heaven. I've given you power to bind on earth, and it will be bound in heaven. So because of that name, because of that name, family, we have now been given this privilege where we can win souls for Christ. At that name. If we read on in the New Testament, I'm not sure where it's at, I read through it last night. It says it's only in that name that people can be saved. His name is Jesus. 
They, the, the angel Lord said his name will be Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Because of that name, family, we can ask whatever we need in his will and we'll be granted. Because of that name, the sick can be made whole. Because of that name, you can cast, yes, you can cast out the unclean spirits that's up in your house, that's up in your family line, that's up in your generation. Because of that name, and because you know that you have the power to exercise that name. Which brings us to my last point. Go back to Acts chapter 3. I want to point two verses out to you, then we'll be done. So the question may be asked, what is that thing? What is that one thing that can activate the power of that name? What is the one thing that we need as believers in this modern day to be able to activate that name, Jesus, and the power and the compassion and the love and the, and, and the grace that comes with that name? Look at verse 12. Sorry, 11. Now, as the lame man who was healed unto Peter, held unto Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon. Solomon's greatly was amazed. So when Peter saw it, keep verse, verse 12. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why do you look so tently at us as though by our own power and godliness we determined to let him go? Let's jump down to verse 16. And his name through faith in his name has made this man strong whom you see and know. To activate this name family, that name Jesus, we must have faith in his name. Not faith in the doctor, not faith in the government, not faith in our employer, not faith in our spouses, not faith in our bank accounts. It must be faith in his name. You want to walk about with power. You want to walk about speaking the word of God and seeing things change like that. Then you and I, we all must have faith in his name. Say, God, it's that simple. Our faith, more than not, is in Man and what man can do for us. Our faith, more than not, is in someone that we ask for something. Can you help me with this? Don't put faith in that person. Put faith in his name. Maybe there's been some time where we missed out on God's blessing or missed out on what God was trying to do for us because we have faith in the wrong name. Don't put your faith in Cornelius. I'm just going to be candid and transparent. Half the time, I may fail you. <laughs> it, no, hopefully no more than half. <laughs> if it's more than half, y'all need to look. Dude, look, in a couple times, you're not really. Uh, don't put your faith in Cornelius. Don't put your faith in Pastor Simon. Put your faith in his name. And as you put your faith in his name, praying for Pastor Simon, then things will be made right. All right. All right. All right. Don't put your faith in your spouse. We love our spouses, right? right? But it's in the name of Jesus. 
What is your faith in? You want the power of God in your life. You want Jesus at the center of your life. You want to see great things done in your life through, through, uh, uh, upon others. Put faith in his name. <laughs> Peter said, it, it, it ain't us. Why y'all looking at why y'all looking at me? I didn't, I didn't touch the man. I didn't heal the man. Somebody come in here and get healed. Oh man, you prayed and you I didn't do nothing. <laughs> I put faith in his name. And I understand there is power in his name. And because I understand there is power in his name, I was able to speak that and know it would be done. I didn't do it. But can you just do I will, I was speaking to my wife the other day. I was watching this particular show, which I won't name here. And those who know I know what I'm talking about. And, and I was telling my wife, I said, it's almost like some of these itinerant pastors are like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Acts. I use the phrase circus acts, but I don't really mean that intentionally. Come on, your turn. Go up. And it's like, my goodness, is this, what, is this what life is like when you're some kind of big name, itinerant pastor, you're going from place to place to place, and, and you, you know, you're up next, go preach. Like you could just turn it on like that. It ain't, it's power in that name. We have to be walking in that name, and as we're walking in that name and have faith in that name, then we can speak, and God knows it'll be done. I think, listen to me, I think if we can just get a deeper, Brandon, keep it going, please, Brandon. If we can get a deeper understanding into the power of that name, that it would change our lives. I've heard a few testimonies around here. I think, Jan, you're, I'm thinking one of your, your testimony. How when Jesus got a hold of Jan, I heard it, she said a couple of Sundays ago. I'm sure in many of you, when that name Jesus got a hold of you, you're like, I'm going to give my life to Christ. I ain't going to church. But then that name was spoken. The next thing you know, you'll find yourself like this. I confess with my mouth and believe my Lord. Oh, and bow the tears. Oh, Lord. Just a week ago, ah, oh, no, I'm not ready for this. But when that night, so we can understand the power of that name, we can begin, family, to do what we've been called to do and do it greater. Get that in your spirit. So all I ask is you walk out of here this morning, family, just like God. I want to know more about that name. I want to live. minister to your people, God. Don't let us stop here. God, I pray that it fell on good ground, fertile soil. God, that your people and the spirit that lives within them was awakened this morning. Awaken God to understand that it's in that name that you have given the name Jesus that we can change the world. Use us, God. We yield ourselves to you. Remind us, Father, of our purpose. Remind us, God, of what we have been chosen, what you have chosen us to do. God, that we can bring about the power that is in that name. This we pray. Jesus' name.